Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest today, folks. The, the, ma the majesty of God is in this house today. Folks, I want to tell you right now that the river of God is flowing around us today. God is pouring His Spirit out on us today. God is measuring us up like the mountains and, and the hills and the valleys. And God's getting ready to take your life right now. He's getting ready to raise the valleys up and bring the mountains down to give you a, to give you a wide platform, a wide place to walk in. Your feet are going to be like hind's feet from this day forward. You're going to be sure-footed. You're not going to slip from the path. You're going to stand upright in God, and you're going to walk in the, in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And guess what? Nothing will be impossible for you to do because with God, all things are possible. How? Through those who believe. And God believes in you today. I want you to, I want to tell you something that God believes in you today. God believes in the ability that he has placed in you. And if God is for you, who and what can be against you? I'm Pastor Ken Swigert of the Cleft of the Rock Church of God. And I'm here today to invite you. I'm here today to invite you in the presence of God to let the Spirit of the Lord have his liberty in you today. That the glory of God would just shine round about us. Did you know as I began to pray and just seek his face this morning and I began I began to see, see angels just begin to encamp at the roundabout us today. They begin to move around your homes. They begin to remove around your lives. They begin to let the word become alive and go forth in you today so that it would not come back void. God is ready to work a perfect work. You have been patient for a long time. James said let patience have its perfect work that you are perfect and entire, lacking for nothing. Did you know that's God's promises? God's, all of God's promises are yes and amen to the glory of God, and so be it. God's, God's desire is that you are perfect and entire. That means entire. That means fully equipped. That means fully versed. That means fully provided for. That, that, that you don't lack for anything. That everything that you put your hands to do, that you can prosper and you can be in health. Even, even, if I say even as, even as my soul prospers in me. Let me tell you something. There's no greater place that I'd rather be than right, than, than he, right here with you, right now, here with you, right here in the presence of a true and a living God. You know, God's for you today. God wants you to know something today. He wants you to understand if you hadn't been told you're loved today, I want you to know that you are loved that God loves you today, and that Stacy and I love you today, the cleft of the rock church of God. We love you today. We want, to, we want you to experience God's abounding love, his abounding mercy. and That's what mercy and grace is. God pouring himself out with what we deserved. We deserved hellfire and damnation. We deserved the weeping and gnashing of teeth. But God poured his mercy and grace out on us on the cross of Calvary. And because of the blood of Jesus, you know what? You can be cleansed today. You can be cleansed of all unrighteousness. I was praying this over myself this morning. And I said, Lord, draw, let us draw nigh to you as you draw nigh to us and cleanse us. Cleanse us, purify us, make us pure even as you are pure. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. See, God wants you to be just like him. He wants you to be entire. He wants you to be complete. Why? Because, because Jesus was the reconciler. He reconciled us. He brought us back into fellowship. God wants us to be presentable as the bride of Christ that is pure, that is holy, without spot, without wrinkle, and without blemish. I'm gonna to talk to you something that I'm gonna to talk to you today about adorning the body. How God adorns us and how we can be a part of adorning the body. Yes, we're still talking about, about Peter, the fix is in. But this is the restoration part. I'm gonna to talk to you. I'm gonna get just there's three steps, three steps to a new life. I'm only gonna to talk to you about one of them today. I'm gonna to talk to you about adorning the body, about, about learning how to, to walk in the fear and the admonition of the Lord and how to reach the unreachable and touch the untouchable. And then when you pour, you let the Spirit of God use you. You let the Spirit of God use you to pour out on others and pour out on the afflicted, to pour out on the wounded, to pour out on the torn, to pour out on the scarred. 
Lord, God will let it come back over you and it will rush back over you, pressed down and shaking together and running. I can feel the Holy Ghost running over you right now. And this is what the Holy Ghost wanted me to ask you today. He said, he said, he said, how you doing? He wants to, God wants to know. Do you believe that? That God wants to know how you're doing today. He wants to know what's on your mind. He wants you to, he wants you to cast all of your cares before him. You say, Brother Ken, oh, God's got, he's too busy. He's too busy to want to know what's going on in my life. I'm telling you right now that God wants to know. He wants to know what you're doing. He wants to know what's on your mind. He wants to know what you need. And all we got to do is just do what Peter did. He said, humble thyself. He told the youth, he said, all you young people, humble yourself. And then he turned around and he realized something. He said, man, that's good for everybody. He said, oh, why don't you all just humble yourself? Why don't you all just humble yourself under the mighty presence of God? And guess what? If we do that, if we just give it to God, he said, and he will lift you up. For he abases, he casts down the proud, but he lifts up those who, who humble themselves underneath his mighty hand. God's ready to lift you up today. God's ready to exalt you. God's ready to adorn you. He's ready to anoint you for the next level, for the next stage, for the next opportunity. <laughs> and a pagan God, a pagan king out of Nineveh said this. They humbled themselves and they got together and they, and they, they created a solemn assembly. They, and they fasted, they prayed, they put on sackcloth and ashes. You know what he said? Because God, God was about to pronounce destruction through Jonah over Nineveh. And you know what he said? He said, who can tell what God will do if we just trust and believe in him? A, a pagan king, if I just trust God. You know, when it all comes down to it, y'all, when, when the rubber meets the road, the, the, he's the only one you can trust. Everybody will leave you. Everybody will forsake you. Everybody will turn away. But the Bible says, he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But how long will I be with you? I will be with you always throughout your entire journey of life. Always, even to the end of the world. Even when the world has to be changed and reformed, God's with you. And he said, I'll, he said, I'll give you, he said, I'll give you an investment. I'll give you an installment. You say, what is that? He gave us the Holy Spirit, as the Bible says, as a guarantee. See, God's invested in you today. God's poured his spirit into you today. God's actually poured it. The same, the Bible says in John 17, the same glory that Christ was given, God's offered it to you and I. Today. Jesus said, the same glory the Father gave me, I now give to you. Did you know he wants you to know all truth? He said, the Holy Spirit, not only will he come, and comfort you, but he'll guide you into all truth. He'll be with you through everything. He'll be with you through every circumstance, and he'll lift you up, and he'll never leave you orphanless. So does God want to know how you're doing today? Absolutely he does. I'll never, I've never. i heard this scripture many times, but it finally gave me a revelation. The Bible says that God thinks about you and I more times of the day than the sands of the sea. More times, he, more times he thinks about you that's listening to me today. He thinks about you that's listening to me today. He thinks about you. He thinks about me. He thinks about Stacy. He thinks about all of us more times of the day than the sands of the sea. And that used, that, that used to just overjoy me and overwhelm me more than I can ever comprehend or even imagine. But then the Holy Ghost laid a new one on me. He said, Ken, no, 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 you don't understand. You're not getting it. He said, we're not just talking about individually. We're talking alone. We're talking about a God that thinks about us more collectively. Seven and a half billion people, more times of the day than the sands of the sea. You can think about everybody. Seven and a half billion people all at one time, more times of the day than the sands of the sea. And then he can turn around and personally think about each one of us individually, each, each, each person, that seven and a half billion people individually, more times of the day than the sands of the sea. That's the kind of God that we serve today, y'all. A God that can do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. Hey, above and beyond anything that you and I can ask or think. You know what he said in, in Corinthians, uh, verse, Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9? He said, I have not seen. Hey, you hadn't seen nothing yet, y'all. You hadn't seen anything. You had, 
you hadn't seen what God's about to do. If you just get on the if you just get on the God train this morning, you get on the glory train with God and let the Holy Ghost begin to anoint you. He said, I have not seen and ear hath not heard. You hadn't heard the sounds of the of the rushing mighty rushing winds, the sounds of laughter, the sounds of joy. When God starts doing great and mighty things and he starts pouring his spirit out on all flesh he starts anointing the the the, the, the dead he starts to anointing the lifeless he starts anointing you and i from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet and he starts pouring blessings out on us more than we can more than we can contain he, he said i have not seen and ear hath not heard and neither has entered into the hearts man we can't even imagine the things that God has prepared for those who love him. He said, I'm ready to pour, he said, I'm ready to pour out blessings on you that you cannot contain. Did you know what, y'all? Did you know this? That God's got so many blessings waiting for us. He's got storehouses. I don't know why God's telling me to tell all y'all this is right now. <laughs> but I'm doing I'm doing God said just open your mouth and let him have it today. He's got storehouses up in heaven that he's already stored spiritual blessings in heavenly places that is running over. Did you know that the Bible says that God will send blessings that will run you down? How many of y'all ready today? How many of y'all ready today? For, how many of y'all like that reverse button, that reverse light when you can see what's behind you, y'all? God's getting ready to run over you and back up, beep, 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 run over and back up and run up, back and run you over so many times, bless you so many times that, that you're going to have to like one of them. I'm telling you right now that the glory of God is on you right now. But God's given us a task today. He's given us a task. If you have your Bibles, turn to Mark, 10, Mark the 16th, Mark 10, y'all. Mark the 16th chapter, verses 1 and 2. And I'm only going to read two scriptures today. We're, we're, we're talking about the fix is in. You know, you've been through it. You've, 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 you had to go through denial. You had to fall. You had to miss the mark. But see, as I told you last time, it's not how far you fall, but it's how you get back up. It's what you do when you get back up. It's what you do when there's chaos all around you. It's what you do when, when it looks like havoc is everywhere and there's discord and there's dissension, as you've just seen in the last few days. All over our country, it's just wreaking havoc all, everywhere. And there's just total violence all over the place. Well, what do you do? I'll never forget when I came across it. You do what Mary Magdalene did. Mary, the mother of James, and Salome did. The day after, the third day after the sun was right, after Jesus had risen from the dead. And you know, you look at somebody like Mary Magdalene, you think people, you, you think you just give up. Folks, this is a woman that Jesus cast seven demons out of her so that she could experience the glory of God. And so that's what I'm trying to tell you today. The commissioning of the, at, at the end of this Mark 16, when you go over there to verses 15 through 18, the commissioning of the Lord is on us today. God's calling each and every one of you today to be, to be, back, to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, to cast out demons in his name, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set at liberty to those who have been bound. And he says, do this in verse 17. He said, follow these, follow, these, and, and follow these instructions that you shall, you shall cast out demons in my name. You shall speak with new tongues. You shall lay hands on the sick and, and, and they shall recover. And guess what? And you shall, eat or, you, shall eat or, you shall not eat or drink any deadly thing and it shall not harm you. This I commission to you. Go to the uttermost parts of the world and, and, and share the gospel Deliver the word of God. Folks, can you imagine you walking in the true spirit of God, walking in the Holy Ghost, walking in the power and the demonstration, and nothing by no means can harm you. Nothing can hurt you. But you're walking in the full authority of God, letting your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. And, and whatever you speak to, it doesn't matter if it's a demonic force. You, when you tell something to go, it goes. If you tell a mulberry tree, a disease, or an affliction, or a cancer, or, or um, coronavirus, or, or diabetes, God, or, or heart disease, anything, a terminal sickness, leukemia, it doesn't matter what it is. You See, you, we look at things in a wrong way. We think casting out demons means you've got you to hear some demonic force speaking, and you can. 
You, if you want to be a part of that, you better make sure you're prayed up. If you do something like that, you better make sure the authority of God is on you when, when, when God tells you to, to speak against those demonic forces and cast them out, cast them away. You better make sure you're walking under the fullness of God's glory. You don't want to be like the sons of Zebedee and, and, say, and, and say, by in the name of Jesus, by Paul, we adjure you. Man, them demons jumped on top of, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. Somebody needs to hear this today. But they, they, that man had them demons, multiple demons on top of him, and he, and he tore off their clothes. We better walk in the power and the demonstration of God. But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about, folks, I'm talking about the afflictions. Thank you. I know why you're telling me this now, folks. I know what God's trying to tell me. He's talking about the afflictions of the body. He's talking about, he's talking about the, the afflictions that the enemy pours out on our body. David, the psalmist David said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord is what? The Lord's able to deliver us out of, the, out of how many? Out of them all. Out of them all. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, in Psalms 103. And all that is within me, bless his holy name, who does what? Who forgiveth how many? All of my iniquities. He forgives you. All of our sins, y'all. We don't have any problem with that. But he also, he heals us of all of our diseases. Folks, God wants you to be per he wants you he wants you to be perfect and entire, lacking for nothing. I'm telling you, it's time to rip off the roof right now. You men and women of God, rip off the roof and go on top and lower those loved ones, lower those who have been afflicted, lower those who have been scarred, lower those who are hurting this morning, lower those widows and those orphans that are in the nursing homes right now. Lower them down in the presence of God and let the blood of Jesus not only cleanse of sin but cleanse of all unrighteousness through the glory of God. You say, where are you going with this? I'm talking about adorning the body. I'm going to be, do more of a, a storytelling today than I normally do of, of telling you about past experiences and where God wants our hearts to be. If you want to know the three steps to being free today, well, the first thing you got to do, first things first, you got to adorn the body. You've got to adorn what God's called you to do. Look what it says right here in, in Mark 16, um, verse 1. And it says, Now when the Sabbath was passed, and Mary Magdalene, Mary the, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, they bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. Folks, it's time to get up early. It's time to start fresh. It's time for a fresh anointing to take over. And so I just lift my hands right now over you. And I and I pray the I pray a fresh awakening over us today. I pray a fresh fire. I pray the fresh anointing of God that God start God give us a do over. That it, thank you, Holy Ghost. That you give us a start over all over again. That we go back and and let God restores back the joy of our salvation. He's going to restore back the old past. Restore back the old buildings. The places where we missed out. The places where we fell short. The places where we should have given that cup of cold water water in his name. God said, I'm going to let you do it all over again, and I'm going to give you a fresh fire. I'm going to give you a new awakening. See, that's what that's what the Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, that's what, and Salome, that's what they were doing. Here you are. I want to build you, I want to build you a background. I want to give you a format. Here you are. You're sitting here. There's discord everywhere. Their master has just been killed. They followed him for three and a half years. They're in love with him. He's the Messiah, but he's dead, and they still don't know yet that he's supposed to be. He's supposed to rise from the dead. That, that he's that he's actually going to rebuild the temple. The temple that he's talking about is not made with hands. He's talking about rebuilding the temple of God, rebuilding the spiritual man, making us clean and from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet being washed in the blood of the Lamb, that our sins were scarlet, they're made as white as snow, though they are red like crimson, they are made as white as wool. But they're terrified. They're terrified. Look, all the disciples have gone and hidden. Now, now John and Peter was hanging around a, a little bit, but man, Jesus is public enemy number one right now. He was numbered among the transgressors. That, that means that when you're numbered with the transgressors, you're one of, the, you're one of the, the highest criminals in all of Rome. The Sanhedrin, they, they got blood in their eyes. 
the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They've just killed the leader. Now they're looking for the 12 and they're looking for everybody who has followed Jesus. And they're, and they're, and they're ready to take, the Sabbath has ended. They're, re- they don't, they're not worried about blood being on their hands anymore, y'all. They're ready to take everybody to the lions, everybody to be crucified, everybody to be stoned to death. It, it, it doesn't matter who they are. But then you got these three ladies and they're sitting here and Jesus, because the Sabbath came early, they, they, all right, folks, we're back. You know, the enemy's really, he's really been trying to stop this today. So this tells me that God really wants you to hear this message today, that this message adorning the body is, is really something that God wants to put out there so that you, so that you can be changed today. You can walk out of this place and you can have a new understanding, a, a new a, a, a new release of the authority of God on you today. So right now, Lord, we just set God's hand forward on us right now. We ask the Holy Ghost to anoint every one of us today, to anoint us all from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Let your word go forth this day, God, and let it not be hindered, but let it accomplish the task it's been set to do. Let your hands reach, your arm is not too short, Father, to be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. You know what we need. You know what those that are listening, that you know what they need even before they pray, even before it's nigh on their lips. So, Father, I'm in agreement with them right now that your word is alive and quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, reaching and dividing asunder the heart and the soul from men. Father, lift us up right now in Jesus' name. So here we are. We're talking about these three women now. You know, they should be afraid. They, 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 should, they, they should be running and hiding just like everybody else. But, you know, all they can think about, y'all, All they can think about is adorning Jesus' body. All they can think about is the fact that they they didn't get to give him a proper burial. They didn't get to give him a proper memorial. They didn't get to to anoint him with sweet spices and oil. And so they get up early in that morning. And the Bible says they're running. They're running through the darkness. They're doing whatever they can just to get to Jesus, just to get to him, just because they know he has been wounded. They know he has been afflicted. They know that, that I've already shared with you all the beating that he took. They know that he's scarred. And, 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 and all they want to do is just love on him because, because, they, because he is their master. He is their Lord. He has taken all of their sins and he has cast them as far as the east is from the west into the sea of forgetfulness and remember them no more. Though your sins are scarlet, they are made as white as wool. Though they are red like crimson, they are made as white as snow. I'm telling you that God is saying to you today that no matter what you're facing, no matter what the circumstances are, No matter how many times you have been hurt, no matter how many times you have been afflicted, no matter how many scars, how how far you have gone today, that God can anoint you. He can anoint you for his kingdom. He can he can raise that's what he's doing. He can raise you up so that you are perfect and an entire lacking for nothing. And so that though the so these three ladies they wanted to adorn the body of Jesus. You say, what do you mean, Pastor Ken? What do you mean when, you talk, when you're talking about being adorned? I'm talking about being fit. I'm talking about being set up for the kingdom of God. I'm talking about God taking you, taking your life that has been in total discord, total dissension, total destruction. Some of you are listening to me right now, and, you're, and, and some people are in total economic upheaval. Some of you have, are just mentally broken down right now. Some of you, some of you are, that are listening to me right now, you, you're going through some terminal sicknesses. But I'm telling you right, the wounds that Jesus taught, the, the, the adornment that God's talking about right now, the afflictions, he's not just talking about sin, y'all. I'm, I'm talking about an anointing that breaks every yoke and sets the captive free. God's ready for you to be healed today. God's ready for you to be delivered today. God's ready for you to be set free today. God's ready for you to be restored, to restore back what the, what the canker worm has destroyed, what the moth has corrupt, what, what the, the thief has laid hold to steal. Some of you have been stolen from. The, what Solomon says in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 6, around verse 31, he said, if the thief had come to steal what he has taken from you, he must give back to you seven times what has been taken from you, even if it means his own house, y'all. But there's a way of escape. There's a way of escape. Ezra says this in Ezra chapter 9, verse 8, that God has given us a nail, 
a peg, a, 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 a remnant, a, 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 a moment of time of mercy, of grace, a way of escape. It means, he says he's given us a time of enlightenment, a, a, a measure of revival. You need to be revived today. A measure of revival and bondage. Our country is in, in bondage right now. Our country is divided. Our churches are divided right now. The Bible says a house divided cannot stand. We're standing on sinking sand, and God needs to lift us up. He needs to undergird us. He need, and the quickest way back to this, folks, is what, is what Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome are doing. They're anointing the body. I'm talking about giving a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus. He said, if you give a cup of cold water in my name, he said, great is your reward. It's not time to lay down. It's not time to quit. It's not time to turn and go and hide. It's time to get up and get out and push yourself forward by the power, by the authority of the Holy Ghost and reach out and reach the unreachable and touch the untouchable. See, folks, I'm not just talking about, when I'm talking about adorning the afflicted, when I'm talking about adorning the body, when I'm talking about adorning the wounded, the scarred, the afflicted. Yes, we're talking about your loved ones. Yes, yes, we want every. The Bible, the Bible says that Paul, that that, that Paul said, uh, Peter says in Second Peter three and nine that God wishes that none. Everybody say none. None would perish, but all would come to repentance. God doesn't want anybody to miss the mark. Uh, but I'm talking about something even different. I'm talking about loving the unlovable. Reaching the unreachable. I'm talking about reaching the those who have caused discord in your life. Those who have caused evil in your life. I'm talking about feeding the afflicted, the widows and the orphans, the, the people, the, the shut-ins, the people who have been in the darkest places in their lives, the drug addictions, the, the whoremongers, the alcoholics, folks. Folks, the people that the people that involved involved in witchcraft and sorcery, even those, even those who who have who have denied Jesus, even those who, who said they, what's that, what's that word, word scripture? What is that, Stacy? people who don't believe in God? Even those who, who no longer believe in God, those, those, who, who, those who have actually, some people have actually, actually taken the satanic, the, there's people with satanic churches, folks, God, people have torn the word, torn the word of God, the atheist, that's the word I was trying to think about. Even the atheist and the agnostic people who say there is no God, folks, I'm telling you, God, they're looking for a people that are going to love the unlovable and reach the unreachable. That's what, that's what Mary Magdalene, Mary, Mary Magdalene was a woman that had seven demons cast out of her. She was a woman, see, see, and, and I'm not just talking about, you don't have to run out here and cast any demons out, y'all, but you know what? David said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord is able to deliver us out of them all. Folks, people that are getting attacked with terminal sicknesses, cancer, coronavirus, diabetes, heart attack, heart disease, leukemia, any kind of sickness, uh, that affliction that's, that's coming to get fibromyalgia. I hear some God speaking that right now. Some, somebody having a nervous disorder or having attacks against their body. Did you know those are afflictions? Those are the afflictions of the devil. The woman with the issue of blood, the Bible said as soon as she touched the hem of his garment, said the affliction left her. And Jesus said, who touched me? I'm talking about reaching the reaching those the, the, the derelicts, the, the prostitutes, those in the highways and the byways, those in the deepest parts of darkness of the, of the world. That we're, God's calling us to adorn them and reach out and bring them back into the kingdom of God. He's calling us to stand fast, be steadfast and immovable and unshakable in our faith. The same things are happening to everybody all over the earth. Reach out and take people and pull, snatch them from the fire. Pull them out of the darkness so that they can walk in the light as we are the light. And his spirit bears witness one with another. You say, Brother Ken, did you do that? Absolutely, folks. The first thing I got called into when I was, when I was called into the ministry, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget as long as I live. We were, sitting, we were in a church that the, the church was full. The church was full down in Riverdale. And 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 it, it was all of your average mom and pop and two and a third kids and you know it's easy to love on people y'all that you know, it's easy to love on people that you have a relationship with, it's easy to love on folks that that can come in and the mom and pop and the two and a third kids can come and sit down and 
and and they can and they pay their tithes right. They don't cause any problems. They don't cause any discord. It's easy to love on the people that can get up and go and come in and go out. But I'm talking about people that have been in total darkness. I'm talking about people that, that are coming out of the woodworks, that have been in the darkest reaches of the earth. I'll never forget this young man. He came in, and he'd been involved in witchcraft. He'd been involved in sorcery. He'd been in, even involved in demonic activity. But folks, he came out of the darkness. God, he came out of the dark. God pulled him out of the, he snatched him out of the fire and pulled him out of the darkness so he could walk in the light. And because he did, he was so elated over the glory of God that he, he was like Jeremiah that was like a fire that, that was shut up inside of his bones. And he couldn't contain it. Every time, he, he didn't know the word. He, did, he, he, he wasn't a theologian, but he knew he was born again. He knew that the, he knew the power of Jesus had changed him and, 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 and renewed his life and, and taken all of his sins and cast them off of him. And, and he became a new creation in Christ and old things passed away. Behold, all things became new. He knew that he was born again. But every time he came down the hallway, y'all, he, he's loud like me. <laughs> He comes in, hey, hey, everybody, hey. Hey, look what Jesus has done to me again today. Every Sunday he come in and do the same thing. And all the well-to-do, all the proper, and everybody that knew how to dress just right, all the, all the goodly Christians, they would all shun him. They would all turn their face, and they would, run, they would run the other way from him. Every time he would want to run up to somebody and tell them about Jesus, they knew, his, they, knew his, they knew his past. They knew what was going on with him. They didn't want to be bothered with him. And I'll never forget what God told me, Stacey. He said, he said when, he, when, he saw him, when I saw him come running down the hallway, he said, whatever, he said, whatever you do, Ken, he said, I'll give you the scarred. He said, I'll give you the wounded. I'll give you the afflicted. I'll, let you, I'll, I'll anoint you to pour in the oil and the wine. Don't run over the indifferent or run away from the indifferent. Don't run away from the people that are not normal, that are not the same, that are not like the outcast, that are not like everybody else. And I'd always let him come up to me. And I'd always listen to him. It didn't matter how loud he got. Man, as a matter of fact, as he got pumped up, I got pumped up. And I loved on him. And I, I, I did everything I could. I was just a new, I was a new, a new creature in Christ. Well, uh, yeah, I was, because I, I got saved when I was 15, but I didn't get, I always tell people I got saved when I was 15. But I didn't get born again, really, until I was 21. I didn't get filled with the Holy Spirit and get called to minister the gospel. So I didn't know a whole lot, but I knew the glory of God. I knew God's power reaching on this young man. And I made up my mind, y'all, that I was going to do so, that I wanted a church. I, I thought everybody thought like I did. I wanted a church that was holy, without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. I wanted a pure church, a holy church a righteous church, a church that loved everybody, a church that, that, a church that couldn't look past nothing else but the blood of Jesus. And he knew that the blood of Jesus cleansed us of all unrighteousness. And I kept loving on him, kept loving on him. But you know what happened? The, the church kept, the church was filled. The church was, they had their cream, they had what I call the cream of the crop. They were skimming off the top of the, that's what the Bible talks about that. When they come and, and they skim off the cream, check it, they skim off the cream of the crop and, 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 and all they want is the good stuff, you know, the stuff that everybody comes in and pays their tithes, right? Everything's going just right. But everything's happening like it's supposed to happen. But we, but you cannot leave the derelict alone. You cannot leave the the, the outcast. You cannot leave the bystander away, y'all. You got to you got to reach every. The Bible says, "He that that turns a sinner from the error of their ways shall save a soul." James says that in James chapter five verse twenty. He that turns a sinner from the error of their ways shall save a soul from death and hide a multitude of sin. It doesn't matter who they are. We got to reach them. We got to touch them. We got to we got to be a part of their lives. Well, they kept shunning and they kept shunning. They kept shunning. Can I sad tell you? It's sad to say that, that, that he wound up going back into the world. Did you know that's why less than Did you know that's why than less than ninety six percent? Did you know that? I'm sorry. Did you know less than six percent of the of the United States is involved in church today? Why? Because we didn't love the because we didn't adorn the body. We didn't adorn the body like we're supposed to. He went back into the world and he got put in jail. And I hate to tell you, but it happened. God said, don't ever forget this. And don't ever change what I put in your heart. 
He went to jail and he hung himself, y'all. The young man hung, he killed himself. Why? Because he lost hope. See, see, hope maketh us not ashamed. And Jesus said, if you're ashamed to be before men, I'm just telling you, you want to know how to get free? You want to know how to get alive? If you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. Folks, me, me and two other men, we went out, and, we, and, and that's what we did. We went, we went evangelized. We went to the highways and the byways. I'm just going to tell you a few stories, then I'm going to move to the end. I'm not going to keep you long today, but I want you to see this. I want you to understand what God wants out of us. I want you to understand that God wants, God wants you to, to make a way where there is no way. If you want to be a peace in the midst of the storm, you want, to, you want God to be a safe harbor in your life, then you turn around and you be the same thing. I'll never forget, we, we went out, and folks, we, me and these, just these two guys in the whole church, we were ministering to everyone. We were going from house to house, apartment to apartment. Folks, we went in, and I didn't know it at the time, but we went into the, we went into the woman at the wells place. Where, and, and, and see, I'm not one of those that are canned outline type people. I'm a heart person. I speak from my heart, and that's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did. It's called confrontation. It's called confrontational witnessing where someone when they're speaking to you talk you let them just say what you you let them say what's on their heart and then when the holy spirit opens the door then you minister to them and that's the way i was jesus was the same way at the woman at the well she'd been to the well she'd have been married she'd have been married five times and now she's back at the well and again must have been a standard meeting place she's back there trying to meet another man trying to find another man to take to give her peace in her life to, uh, trying to find another man to take the place. She's got a man at home, and, and, and he's not even making her happy. Folks, why don't we do this? The women, ladies, listen to me today. If you're, you're out there, you want somebody to love you today, and you want, I know everybody needs somebody, and I know everybody wants. I don't know why the Holy Ghost is telling me to say that, but I'm going to. I, I don't, I, I listen, when I, when I met my wife, I didn't go looking for my wife. I didn't go, when I got called in the ministry, I didn't go looking for somebody to, to, to give me love. I had my love. I had my first love. Jesus is our first love. He, he, he's, he's my first response. He's the, he's the keeper of our hearts today. I had my joy that was unspeakable and full of glory. He's my, he's our Lord. He's our God. He's our, he's the keeper of his word and he watches over his word to perform it with wonders to perform. And I knew that all I needed to do was commit myself to him. All, the Bible says, you, I know in whom I trust and believe. And that he's able to keep that which I have committed to him through the Holy Spirit. Whatever you commit to God, God will keep it for you. you got to make, if you want love in your life, you make God your first love. You make him your everlasting love. You fall head over heels in love with God. You want to know my, you want to know my, my theology about God? you got to be more in love with him than you are with yourself. And once you get to the place that you, that you know that you're more in love with God than you are, then you can love the unlovable. You can reach the unreachable. And you can be loved by God. And, and ladies, if you wait on God, God will bring you that Prince Charm. He'll bring you that. All right, folks, we're back again for the third time today. We're, yes, we are having te te technical difficulties, and, and I apologize for that. But we're going to get through this. We're going to get through what God wants you to have today. We're going to get through the anointing of God. I just got through talking to you, to you ladies about, about being more in love with God than you are with yourself. If you want that righteous man, you want that righteous that righteous, godly man to be in your life that'll treat you, that'll love you like Christ loved the church with the washing of the water of the word, then you gotta wait on him. You gotta let God bring him to you. That's what I did. I waited on God to bring me my wife. I said, Lord, you, if, if you've called me into the ministry, at first I thought I was just gonna be in evangelism. I said, well, you know, I'll be like Paul and could be a eunuch unto the Lord. But everybody, I guess everybody needs somebody to be there with them, to, to be their companion, to lift them up, to encourage them, to be both their fan and both their critic all at the same time and, and, and to uh, compliment them and everything they do. And so when God called me into the pastoral work, I, I knew that I had to have a wife. And, and so I, I waited, folks. I waited. You say, what, what did you wait on? I waited for God to send me someone that could do what I, that could compliment, that could do what I do, that could adorn the body, that could love the unlovable, that could reach the unreachable. And my wife is exactly that way. She doesn't require, she doesn't like to be the center of attention. She doesn't like to be in the forefront. She just, she's got a, she's got a ministry of help. She's just like Martha. She likes reaching out to the people, loving the very, the very people that everybody discards. She's just, she's just as happy as she can be to be a part of them, to reach out and, 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 and let those very people be a part of their lives. And so we bring, we were bringing those people in. We, were, we brought this lady in. <laughs> we're bringing the women at the well in, folks, me and this one other guy. 
and 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 I mean she had this she had four daughters and they were they were all daughters of different men and they had all started generations where they also they all started having children themselves and but you know what it, it, they may have been the out they may have been the outcast to, to to someone else they may have been the outcast of many of us but to, to God they were they still needed to be loved they still needed to be adorned they they still needed to be to be drawn out of the fire to be snatched out of the fire to be brought into the kingdom of God to what to show them the right way there's a way that seemeth right but the but the Bible says the end leads to destruction folks we we need to lead people down the straight gate we need, we need to lead we don't need to lead people down compromising paths the Bible says broad is the way and wide is the path that enters it leads to destruction, and many that enter thereat. But straight is the gate. What's that straight gate? Straight is that gate. Is that righteous word, that holy word, that holy word that is that is without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. That I'm talking about giving people a word of life, a word of truth, not a mamby pamby lay lay me down type of word where where uh where the where the word is 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 a fable or a mystery and it's got a tickling ear and it, you only tell people what they want to hear so that you can get to get people to come into the household of faith and you can you can build up your body and all that to where you can where your ties can get bigger no i'm talking about a word of god that reaches down deep inside of an individual and they're changed from glory to glory from faith to faith and the word of god is like what paul says in hebrews 4:12 that it's alive and it's quick and it's powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. That the word actually cuts even asunder. It separates the soul and the spirit. And it cuts the flesh off down to the marrow of the bone. To where a person has a true encounter. A person is totally changed. That their flesh is totally crucified in them. And that and that their, their whole desire is to know the truth. And that the truth shall make them free. That they learn to strive towards the straight gate. To pursue God's righteousness and the beauty of his holiness. To wake up in the profound understanding and the revelation of God's word. That they are they are totally changed from glory to glory and from faith to faith. And they're willing to lay down their lives. The only thing that matters to them is they live a righteous and holy and pure life in the sight of God. That we teach people how to adorn themselves and to adorn the body that there is only one way into the kingdom of God. And Paul says this in Hebrews 12, 14. He says, follow the peace of all men. How? In true holiness, in the true holy word that, that God's following God's word line upon line and precept upon precept here a little, there a little. Everything that we do, we, we allow the Word of God to be to be our example. To, to walk in the light as God is light. And that our spirits bear witness one with another. See, people got to be able to see the glory of God in you. They got to be able to see the profound Word. They got to be able to see that there, there's got to be a change in your life. That you're literally, that you're literally... The, the, the only thing that matters to you is that, is that you let your light, as, Paul, as, as Jesus said in Matthew 5, that you let your light shine before men. And that you, declare thy, that you declare thy good works, that we walk as sons and daughters of God. Not as, not as people pretending to be like Christ. Not as, 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 as the Bible says, as, as, as Paul says in 2 Timothy, those who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. But those who walk in the very light of God that, the, that they, they let their light so shine before men that people see a difference. And that light shines in the darkness and dispels the darkness, dis, dispels, dispels sin, causes disease, causes discord, causes dissension to flee. And James said, James said in, in, in the book of James 4 and 7, he said, he said, submit thyself. See that submission of God. Submit thyself to God. Submit thyself to the word of God. Submit thyself to him. And, 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 Satan, and, and, and Satan will flee from, and the devil will flee from us. God is looking for a generation that will live a life that is pure and holy. And not only in the sight of God, but in the sight of men. Let God be God and let your enemies be scattered. Declare the works of the living God and, 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 let, and he will be lifted up. God, be real. Be real in the sight of God. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we're all perfect. 
I'm saying we're all, we should strive toward the straight gate. Straight is the gate and narrow. What are you talking about, Ken? I'm talking about putting on the new man every day. Ephesians 2, 22 through 20. Put off that old conduct. You can't keep living the way you used to live. In the world. You can't keep talking the way you used to talk. You can't keep acting the way you used to Put off that old conduct that grows corrupt from day to day. Don't let the deceitful lust of the flesh hold on to you and I. Folks, he says, put on a new man. What new man? The one, it says, created according to God. By God's design. And I, I know people say, oh, Brother Ken, why are you talking like this towards us? Because I'm telling you, folks, there ain't but one way into the kingdom of God. There's only one way into God's house. And, and, and this, is what, this is what Peter said. Peter understood it better than anybody else. He said this in 2 Peter um, 4.18. He said that for scarcely a righteous man, that's a holy man or holy woman, for scarcely a righteous man shall be saved. He said, wherefore with shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? Well, we know who the sinner is, but who's the ungodly? I, didn't, I wasn't planning on this today. But you know what? Maybe, the, maybe this thing got disrupted so God could, could speak to me the way he wanted to speak. I'm telling you, the, he said, the, who is the ungodly? That's the carnal Christian. That's the person who goes to church every Sunday. We have a, not, we have a head knowledge of God. We have, a, we, have a, we have a head knowledge. We have an understanding. We have an academic knowledge of God. We've, we've gone to church long enough that we can play church and we can, we can act the part and we can, we can look like we're... we're, we're we're holy and set apart unto the Lord. But only you and only I know if we really have searched our heart, if we really have done the most important thing in our life, if we truly have kept the commandments of love, as my wife says all the time, if we have loved God, with, if we have loved God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, and loved our neighbor as ourselves, have we adorned the body? I wake up sometimes thinking, you know, Lord, I, say, I tell him, I say, God, I don't want to go... I don't want to, I, not that I want to leave this world, that I want to be near you, God, but I don't want to get to you, and I want to get into your presence and realize that I haven't done what you wanted me to do, that I missed the mark. Now, if you've held me up and you've, and you've saved me for another day and you're, and you're using for me for a last day anointing, that's fine, that's good. But if I've missed the mark, show me the error of my way. Show me what I need to do. Raise me up and, and you, use me again, all over again. It doesn't matter how old I am. I told my son that the other day. Moses was 80 years old before he started preaching. <laughs> and he lived to be 120. He said, well, well, why do you want to wait? I don't know why God waits that long on some people. I don't know why God allows certain things to happen. But sometimes we just got to trust God. We just got to depend on him. And I didn't forget about it. I didn't forget about Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. It says, put on the new man. What new man? It says, created according to God. That means by his design, God designed you this way. That's why God made you in his image. He made me in his image. By his design... And by his likeness, by his exactly by, by his characteristics, by his nature. It says in true righteousness and true holiness. Only if we walk in tr true righteousness and holiness shall we enter into the kingdom of God. Peter said, Peter said, for scarcely the righteous man will be saved. That's grace, y'all. That's what true grace is. The carnal Christian who only has a form of God's God's understanding, only has a knowledge of God, but we don't have the adorning love inside of us to reach the unreachable and touch the untouchable and meet their, and, and meet the, their, their needs and, and, uh, according to God's riches and glory. Pull, snatch people up out of the fire. Folks, I'm telling you, we're going to be sadly mistaken when we wake up because what God's true grace is, is this. It, it's this. It's, it, when he says, for scarcely a righteous man shall be saved, it's as holy as you and I can become. As righteous as you and I can become. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I had a a lot of other things I was going to talk about today, but but the the time doesn't permit it, and 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 because of these distractions, I want to get to the point today. I want to I want to tell you where God's leading us to today. And so Stacy and I, it's 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 when he says that a righteous man shall scarcely be saved, it means as holy as you can live. I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna let the enemy take this over today. As holy as you can live, as righteous as you can live, y'all. Let me tell you. As it, it, close as we can live into the likeness of Christ, people say, "Oh, everything's done at the cross." Yeah, that's true. But you, but you know, after you get born again, the, the Paul says, "Work out thy salvation with fear and trembling, where much is given, much is required." 
I'm telling you, the more we know about Jesus, the more the, the more life, the righteous life we're the, that we're required to live, the more we're required to adorn the body, the more we fall in love with Jesus, the more he's going to require us for us to accept the example for others and 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 reach out and touch the and touch touch the untouchable and reach the unreachable. So when he says for scarcely the righteous man shall be saved, he's saying this right here. As holy as you can live a life that you live, it's still, everybody say still, it's still going to be by only by God's mercy and grace that we're allowed to get into the kingdom of heaven. The most righteous man and the most righteous woman, the, the exact way you're supposed to live, that's, that, that is still going to, it's still God's grace that, that allows us to live like that and allows us to get in there. Now, I mean, Stacy, when we left there, we, we went up to Sanoa, and the first thing we did, I, folks, I took my wife, and I took my kids, and they both evangelized with me. They both, my kids went out at seven years old and 11 years old, and we went from house to house to house. We went to all the people, and, and we, we go to everybody. We don't leave anybody out. We went, and I want, and I don't mean this in, I don't mean this in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an unruly type way, but, but we went to all the normal people. We went to all the, the people in, in the, the regular homes and the regular houses, and, and we were we called knocking on doors and, and, and just me and my wife and kids just evangelizing the streets and trying to bring them into the kingdom of God. But because, you see, I understand something. It's why does God take us through trials and tests and tribulations? Because we work better on pressure. When everything's going right, when everything's going good, people forget about God. They forget about the house of God. They forget about their need in God. But when your flesh becomes weak and your flesh becomes corrupt, and all of a sudden we're in a situation like we're in in this country right now, and we're downcast and we're downtrodden and we're broken and we don't know what we're going to do next, and they're calling this Corona, this this lifestyle, a new a new normal. I'm never going to live that way, folks. I'm never going to let man control my life. I'm always going to let my. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man and a righteous woman are ordered by God, and he del and he delights in our ways. If God be for us, who and what can be against us? Nobody can separate us from the love of God. And what God puts together, let me tell you something, nobody can put it asunder. Once God starts a work, it cannot be reversed. I'd rather have God on my side. I'd rather have God in my corner and God be and God and, and have the favor of God. I'd rather have one day, the Bible said one day, one day in the house of God is better than a thousand in the tents of the wicked, y'all. In the last days, the Bible says, and, and, and this is just coming out of my spirit, and in, in, in the book of Proverbs, Solomon says this in Proverbs 19, 11, It says, The house of the wicked shall be destroyed, but the house of the righteous shall flourish. And then it says in verse 14, it, then it says in verse 14, it says, it says, the gates of the, it says, it says, for the gates of the wicked shall be destroyed, but the house of the righteous, it shall flourish. God's calling us. Let me read that to you in my spirit. I, I, let me see if I can find that real fast, y'all. Where did I say that? Was that Proverbs? I didn't mark it down. It's just in my spirit. No, I got it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Proverbs 19, 14. It says, I'm talking about adorning the body. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost, for bringing that back into my remembrance. It says, evil shall bow down at the good. That's adorning the body, folks. If, I didn't. I just got a revelation, y'all. All this took place so God could say this. Evil shall bow down at the good, and the wicked shall bow at the gates of the righteous. That is the altars of the church. The only way that people can be reached, y'all, is if you, if you adorn the body, if you love the scarred, if you love the, if you love the afflicted, if you love the wounded. Is that what it says, Stacy? Evil shall bow down at... Let me, let me find it for y'all, y'all. It's Proverbs uh, 19, 14, I believe. I, I know that's what it says. I'll never forget when I came across this scripture. And it says... I'm sorry, it's 14, 19, excuse me. I had it reversed. Yep, 14, 19. The evil shall bow down at the good, and the wicked shall bow at the gates of the righteous. Folks, what is he talking about right there? He's talking about adorning the body. He's talking about a revival. He's talking about walking in the light as God is light. He's talking about you and I, uh, uh, you and I 
allowing uh, allowing the light to shine in us so that what so that those who are in darkness when they that when they see the light I'm going to share something with you in just a second when they see the light they can come out of the light they can come out of the darkness they can come out of the evil that they're in they can come that they, they, they can they, they'll bow down at the good and the wicked shall bow at the gates and they'll be so elated all over again there'll be a great revival Stacy and I went down there to to Sonoma and we went to all these houses and we were ministering to people. Just didn't they didn't want to hear it? Their lives weren't their, their lives weren't at a place where, the, where 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 they needed to bow down at the good, bow down at the glory of God, bow down at the, at the adorning of God. So you know what God told Stacy one day? We turned the corner on old I, I, on eighty. I'm gonna stop right here. We turned the corner on eighty five highway, old eighty Georgia eighty five. We turned on sixteen, and all of a sudden we've been we've been going and going and going trying to reach people. And the Holy Ghost says to Stacy, he says. He said, she said, we're on the wrong side of the road. Here we are again in the worst of all of worst. He said, cast thy net on the other side. And so we cast, and so we looked to the other side, and you know what was there, y'all? It was this old trailer park. I'm talking, these old, delight, and I don't, there's nothing wrong with trailers. Nothing wrong with living it, but I'm talking, but these trailers were 30 and 40 years old. They were all rusted out, folks, and they had beer cans stacked up two and three feet high on them, and we didn't realize it. The, the Sonoa called this place the armpit of Sonoa. We went in there and there was drugs, there was alcohol, there was a crack house behind it. And, we, and Stacey and I took my, myself and I and our children. And did you know, no minister had, in 20 plus years, no minister had ever been in this, this, this trailer park because they were all scared to go up in there. And so God said, I want you and your wife to go up in there. And we went up in there, we went into, went into their homes and we began to minister to them. Folks, we had we had we had midweek Bible studies in there, didn't we, Stacy? They wouldn't didn't get them to come to church, but we had we had midweek Bible studies. We had we had hamburgers and cookouts, and we and we went in the, and, and we went and we ministered to these people who were who were broken, these people who were scarred, who were who were caught up, and who were who were dealing in drugs, and they were selling drugs, and they most part most times of the day they were all either inebriated or, ine or they were three sheets high in the wind. But we went up in there and, and, and God had us minister to them and speak to them. And sp we spoke the word to them. We, we preached the gospel and we had open air preaching out there with them. And folks, there were times, I, I, I kid you not, that there were times that we saw, when we saw them, that we would go in and, and, they, and they would all be high, but we would still minister to them. And they would uh, they'd be watching uh, the Gaither Vocal Band on uh, or Gaither Vocal uh, Homecomings on, on crying and weeping. Why? Because they were so bound up and so caught up in the cares of life, so caught up in the generations of of of, of drugs and alcohol that they just they, they couldn't let go of it. It was a demon that just bound them. And I, there was one night that me and Stacy went through there, and it was about ten o'clock at night. We had just we had just set the church up, and God said, "Ride back in there." And He said, "Get out of the." And I said, "Get out of the car for a second. And, I, and there's on this old dirt road beside the trailer parks. And uh, I got out there, and all of a sudden, one of them just came out from nowhere and grabbed me, and grabbed me, and, went, and, and wanted me and Stacy to pray. He said, said, pray the demons off of me. Pray the darkness off of me. Pray all the circumstances. I, I can't sleep. They're, they're all around me. And you know what me and Stacy did? We got on our knees on that old dirt road, y'all. And we started started praying. We started lifting them up. We started praying. We started praying the light and the glory of God. And all of a sudden, darkness dissipated, and the light and glory of God was all over the place. And there was this one old young 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 man there that he that he had uh, that he had, had had to wear a prosthesis on his leg because he had a hunting accident while he was little. And folks, you you've never seen it till you've seen people just be bound by stuff up in there. But we would come in there trying to minister to him, and they, the, the poor fellow, he, he sat there and he would he actually pawned his his leg off just to be able to get the drugs and all that. And but you can, can I tell you what? We kept witnessing to him, ministering to him, and then finally, you said, "Ken, did you win them? Not all of them, not all of them. We didn't, we didn't, but we but we still went where God wanted us to go, and we adorned the body. And there was a finally a prophetic word came. You can ride up there today if you will, and and. And, and, and the Holy Ghost told him, he said, that the, the, the prophet of God, the man of God, and the woman of God have come up and they have spoken the truth. We was there three and a half years ministering to them. And we spoke the word. We spoke God's word over them and preached and gave them the entire truth so that there was no way they could ever deny that they had not heard the truth. 
But finally the Holy Spirit said to him, because you have not heard the word and because you have not heard the truth of my, of my, my, uh, my mouthpiece, my prophet, he said in, 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 in less than a year's time, just like he told Nebuchadnezzar, when Nebuchadnezzar wouldn't listen to God and he wouldn't humble himself, God caused a, a, a spirit of madness to come over him. And, and he went out into the field and, and, he, and he, his fingernails grew out like bird's claws and his hair grew out like feathers on his back. And he ran around on the ground and ate, ate grass of the, for seven years. He was like a mad animal right on the ground. And here's, and you think, well, you, what? And I, didn't, I left this part out, but I can tell it to you. Where I first started preaching, I mentioned a while ago the, um, the widows and the orphans. I always called those people at the nursing home. I first learned how to preach. When everybody was in Sunday school, I would go over and minister to these people that were, that were, uh, that were bound up and they were in shut-ins. They, they were in wheelchairs and they were in day beds and, and walkers. And, and a lot of them were on medications and they, they, they really couldn't comprehend anything until the glory of God came down. The anointing of God came down and would anoint them. And all of a sudden, they, there's, you know, it's funny how when God's glory shows up, everything else leaves. And all of a sudden, they, they awakened up and the Spirit of God was moving on them. You say, why did I go back and tell you about that, about where I started pre preaching nine years in the nursing homes? Because that the very young guy, the guy that, um, the guy that was there that, that was one of the lead guys that was, that was bound by drugs and alcohol, he said, Ken, get the, he, said, we're, he said, we're too evil. The devil won't ever come do anything, and God won't ever come do anything in this trailer park. He won't ever come. He won't ever come change what's going on. I said, I tell you what, in three years, the white coats. You know, I didn't. I didn't you know, he was talking about the ambulances, or, or he said, I said, the, the men in white coats will come deliver y'all out, deliver you out of this trailer park, and this trailer park will be will be crushed to the ground, and it will no longer be here. Did you know what? In a year's time. Because God was adorning that body, trying to reach the unreached, touching them, trying to change their lives. In a year's time, this, this fellow, I'm not trying not to say his name, in a year's time, he steps through the, he, he ste the, the trailers were so old that the, they were dry rotted out. He steps, through the, he steps through the floor of his bathroom. It was dry rotted out and breaks both his legs. And you know what they did? They took him back down. You're talking about coming around in full circle? They took him back down to the exact same nursing home that when, before Stacy and I ever even met. They took him back down to the exact same nursing home that I originally started preaching at. And that's where, that's where he, I finally went down there and talked. Did he give his life to him? Yes, I was able to go down there and I was able to talk to him about Jesus, that his time was coming. And it wasn't very shortly after that that, God, that, that, he, that, he, that, his, that he gave up his life and he went on to be with the Lord. One more, one more circumstance, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll tell you where I'm going with this. I'll never forget this one time this guy came into our church, and, and, and I'd never met him before in my life. He was all tatted up. He had all over his arms, and he was, he was a, young biker man, a young biker's son. And, and when he came into that morning, God had me minister to him, had me prophesy, tell him that God was going to love him in the way that, that he had never been loved before. He was, going to, he was going to change his life and turn his life upside down because, it, because God had, had set aside, this was the day, this was the day the Lord had made for him. I remember just like it was yesterday that God had set up that day just for that young man to come in there. And I, and, and I wrapped my arms around and began to love on him. We both began to weep. We began to cry in the altar. And, and you know what he did, y'all? He pulled out a picture. He pulled out a picture of his real father. He said, this is my real dad. And he said, you know what? He said, you just told me that God was going to love me like a, a father, like I had never been loved before. I had never known any hope in my life. He said, my father was so bound in drugs that he tried to sell me for $50 worth of crack. He, he, he did whatever he wanted, do whatever he could just to get a hold of drugs. Until this day, I never knew what it was like to have somebody lo to love me. You know what happened? Not 30 days later, my wife will tell you, 30 days later, he's in a home in Forest Park. And somehow, I don't know what happened, but somehow a, a cigarette got an ashes. Somebody went to sleep or whatever. They had a cigarette and they went to, sleep and, and they went to bed and, and the ashes went down into an air duct beside the wall. And the whole house caught on fire and burnt. And him and, and the other person that was on the inside of with, with them, they all died. You say God isn't right on time. You say God doesn't know what He's doing. That God, that God's not reaching out. He's trying to, He's trying to reach the people 
that have that have been uh, afflicted, those who are shattered, those who are torn, those who have been in the deep. You start there first, y'all. The deepest, dark, darkest part of the world. The people who need to be snatched out of the fire. I'll say this to you again, James 5 and 20, and I'm closing. He who turneth a sinner from the error of the ways shall save a soul. I got so many more that I could tell you about. So don't be afraid to get close to people. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Save a soul from death and hide a multitude of sin. Talking about adorning the body. Isaiah 60 says this. Our light has come. Your Arise and shine. It's time for us to rise up, y'all. You want your life to be changed? I'm talking about three steps of restoration. That's the first thing Peter did. He arose and shined and started preaching the gospel, started ministering. Arise and shine and adorn the body. For your light has come. Many of you today, your light has come. He said darkness is over the entire face of the earth. We got it right now. Darkness is all over the earth. We're in a light, we're in the days where men call evil good and they call good evil. We're in a, we're in the last day. We're in the days where where there's discord and dissension and destruction everywhere. That there's such a there's such a division in the house of God right now. We're supposed to be all be spiritual stones and grafted into the vine, where the and housed by the Holy Spirit. Not not many different denominations. Not not black or white or yellow or. Or any, or whatever, not different racial racial divides. We got so many racial divides right now. The biggest division in the in the world right now is not just in the world. It's not what's happening on the street. It's in the house of God. God's calling a unity of faith where we rise a shine and let our light shine. When the darkness is, is when the darkness is the greatest, we're supposed to let our light shine. And it says in Isaiah sixty, though darkness shall be upon men, it shall not be upon those who have who have adorned the body and who have set up under the, the hand of Jesus. You know what he's calling us to do? Be pillars, pillars in the house of God. Ministers, men and women, as a flame of fire in the house of God. Why? So that when people are in trouble, when people are overladen, when the enemy is coming in like a flood, we can be that standard of God, that God raised that standard up in us. And I, in Psalms 32, says he, he says, songs of deliverance shall come. And you know what's going to happen, folks? It says, that, and here's where I close at. Here, if, you know what's going to happen? Is that the Bible says that if we be that pillar, we be that minister as a flame of fire, if we be that pillar of fire on the hillside that God has set aside, it says that people shall be like water. Like, like the water running across the earth, like an ocean running across the earth, just to get into the house of God and be adorned by the body of God that the, that the, the um, come on, Holy Ghost, the evil shall bow down at the good and the wicked, the, the, the wicked those who have been involved in the wicked things, they're going to turn and be so elated. They're going to bow down at the gates of the righteous. They're going to bow down at the glory of God and the greatest revival that mankind has ever seen. More people that come into the kingdom of God than have ever been since the beginning, all together since the beginning of time. You say, why did I say that? Because I say this in close. <laughs> What's on your mind today? What is on your mind? What, what, would you, what would you like to tell God today? The Bible, his thoughts of you and me, the, his thoughts of you that are listening right now, we got through this today. The enemy tried to stop it, but his thoughts of us are more than can be numbered, more than the sands of the sea. God cares about what's going on in each person's life today. And, I tell, and if we can, if you and I can, can turn our love around today, if we give a cup of cold water in the name of the Lord, he says, great is your reward. If I, you and I can say this, if we can join together in agreement and we can say this, that I'm more in love with you, Lord, than I am with myself, and I'm not afraid to reach the unreachable and touch the untouchable whew, and adorn the body today. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all we're going to remember. You know what? When you leave this world, all you're going to be remembered for is what you did. What you did good. What you did for the Lord. That's all we're going to remember. Be remembered by. It's not going to be our accolades. It's not going to be your bank accounts. It's not going to be your houses or your land or, 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 or all the different businesses you started. The greatest love that we can show today is laying down our life for one another. And, and, and being what? That's what Paul said in, in, in uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. 
making ourselves a living sacrifice. That's the only way you're going to. That's the only way we're going to get into the kingdom of heaven. A living sacrifice to God, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable servant. What is God's holy? What's holy and acceptable to God? Letting your light shine before men, and declaring thy good works that they what that they will in turn turn around and glorify the Father in heaven. I love you today. And I thank God that God allowed us. Sorry that we didn't, I couldn't add get, get the other stuff in there today, but and but we we had a little mal couple of malfunctions. But you know what? We're gonna we're gonna put them all together and just just uh, 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 bear witness with us on as far as our technicalities, and and that we had a few mistakes today. But we we got we'll get it right. We'll get we got it together and we got we got this finished for you today. Take this word and listen to it. Hear what this word means. To, to allow you to to uh, to start a new life to to be res to restore back the joy of your salvation. God bless Station. I love you today. God loves you in Jesus' name, and I want you to be. I want you to start a new life today. In in Jesus, be changed, be changed from glory to glory and faith to faith. And we just give God all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. We thank you right now in advance that you've already heard us. God heard you when you prayed this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.